What is going on people and welcome back to the channel. I have an exciting video for you today and that is because I'm going to get my car that I've rebuilt myself inspected at McGurk's. Now these guys are well established within the used Aston Martin scene so I'm expecting this car to be torn apart a little bit but I'm going to use it as a learning experience so that I can fix these problems with my car and get it as perfect as I possibly can. So let's introduce you to John. So how are you John? It's nice to meet you. Hey John, how are you? How are you mate? I'm um, good. So I brought the car to John. Obviously like I've just said he's a well-known used car salesman for the Aston Martin scene and I know the standard of cars he sells and I've, I've heard from the Aston Martin DIY community of people that bought the cars, the standard he sets. So there's no better person to inspect this car as if you were going to buy it or sell it to let me know my fatal flaws. No pressure, no in, pressure. Uh, in, so, in my rebuild of this car. So, uh, so we'll take it to the workshop and we'll, uh, we'll have a look at it as if we were going to buy the car anyway. Um, take a look at a few points um, and, uh, 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 and just have a general look over it and go from there. Sounds good to me. Okay. Let's do it. Right. So that's it in there with them. I've got to say, I am a little bit nervous about this. Um, I can tell you all day that I've repaired this car correctly, but the proof is in this. And as a businessman, obviously, he's, his employees are, it's in their best interest to pick up faults on these cars. And maybe this stuff I've overlooked. So I am a little bit nervous and looking at his fleet, he's pretty ruthless with what he checks for. I can already see in there that they've got the wheels off, they're getting the under trays off. He's taking a good look and I've just saw a guy mopping up something from under my vehicle which is not uh, that, <laughs> that good and I wasn't aware of a leak when I set off this morning. Right then John, third time lucky. We've, uh, we've actually done this shot twice already but the noise keeps interrupting it. We're now inside without the wind. But looking at that list I'm a little bit unsettled by the amount of things that are on there thought it was done, but let's, uh, let's see what you think about it. Okay, um, so uh, firstly, Josh, I'm going to say hats off to you because the job that you've done on this car is, is, is super and very clear to see that a lot of time and effort has gone into this car. Um, uh, so the bits and pieces I've got here, this is nitpicking bits and pieces um, and nothing of any uh, great concern. Um, so no particular order. Um, the filament for the washer bottle uh, has got a split in it, so when you fill it all the way up, it, it leaks. I did see that looking in, and I saw a guy mopping from under my car, and that was that was very unsettling. <laughs> I definitely didn't give it to you a leak. So, <laughs> uh, so th there's that uh, standard Aston Martin things like the mirror arms peeling. Uh, the, one of the rear lights has got some condensation in it, as they do. Um, your tyres are a bit old, there's some, uh, the, the, the treads, the, where the water jackets are, the, uh, um, there's some cracks starting to appear in those. Front grille, um, the top vane is missing, uh, we took the, uh, the under tray off underneath the engine and there's some slight misting of oil where the timing cover normally leaks, but your timing cover is in perfectly good order, but the, the tube, the pipe above it that we spoke about, um, there's a little bit of oil coming out of that, it's a little bit loose. One of the clips isn't quite new, it's not the original clip and then the original clip will just keep it a little bit more uh, secure and stop it winging around quite so much. Being an M420, the splitter is, uh, is missing from the front. When you lift the bonnet up, open that slam panel, again, it's missing the M420 badge from there. The, uh, this, well, you've had some paintwork done on the sill, there's a bit of a paint run and the PPF stone chip protection is missing. The paintwork on the front of the car generally is very, very good, but it's, there's some sinkage because um, it's clearly been done a little while. So uh, a really good, a really first class guy will be able to mop that, take the, take the lacquer back and, and just lift all that sinkage, uh, which would be a good thing to do. Driver's door, there's a uh, the seal that goes between the wing and the door, it's got a, it's got a tear in it. Um, yeah, when, again, when you open the bonnet from the hinge area, there's a bit of poor paint on that. Oh, and the docking station where you put your key in should have, uh, there's a, there's, 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 it says engine to start, and the, and the little tab at the top with engines uh, missing. 
In all honesty, um, I mean, you can, we can tell when, we, when we've got the car in the end, I'm looking up underneath, so we, I can see the parts that have been taken from a different car, so I can see the difference between the two. Um, but actually, I, I think you've done a really, really, really good job uh, of making this car what it is, um, and it's not sort of like that. It shouldn't have been written off, that's for sure. Brilliant, um, I thought the same, but good to hear it from a professional and someone that deals in this sort of, sort of obviously, on a regular basis. Um, there is a, I, I didn't know about the majority of them, but you did find something that I was aware of, and that is, that is the key fault, and I didn't even know that existed, so. They've just got, it, 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 it's, it, there's two tabs, uh, uh, the top one says engine, the bottom one says start, and they can, they, they can flick off. Well, thanks very much for that. I guess the last thing to do is, we need to drive it, because if it looks this good, um, but it goes sideways down the road, then it's all, in, it's all, it's all wasted, isn't it? So let's get in there and see what you think. And I'm interested to know that, because no one else has actually driven this car other than me. So okay. it'd be nice to see what you think right. um, in terms of how it drives and whether it drives as it should. So let's get this camera set up. And it. Okay. Yeah. I mean, I've seen that you've got some nice cars and that Ferrari F40 in your, um, in your showroom. So please do feel free to take this on a spirited drive. I trust that you've got the uh, competence here. Yeah, no, we'll uh, just take it nice and... Uh, do you know what, and you can tell this car's at 12,000 miles because the steering wheel feels nice. Because these steering wheels, they, they can, um, this sort of suede material, can, it, it ends up being really polished and it goes hard. And uh, one of the things that we like to do is because it looks a little... When they, when they, when they, when they get old, the, the, the steering wheels start to look a little bit... Well, just a bit used, really. And it's a really nice thing to do, to, turn, to sell the car to someone and say, I'll tell you what, and you you re you retrim the wheel so that they're the first person to touch that steering wheel, which might sound like a thing, but it's just a d detailed thing. That um, that's nice, nice, that? mm. um, uh, but it's just a nice little detailed thing that when it's your new car for your first time, and uh, you know it's just it's just a nice touch, really. So I actually just give that a good scrub out because where I've been maintaining it and having dirty hands and moving it, it was actually full of grime. Yeah. I give it a good scrub out. We do that, is it? Is, yeah, is, yeah. Our, our Andy that looks after our detail and balancing, he's, um, he's got a really good technique with it and um, yeah, it makes them a lot new again. It's a nice interior, it's nice, isn't it? It's all, um, it's all, it all looks like it should do for a car that's got 12,000 miles on the clock. You know, the leather's not shiny, it's not worn um, uh, too much in certain places where normally where your elbows go and, you know, the gear lever, the gear lever material and that sort of thing. Because interiors, you can repaint the outside of a car, but the interior of a car just gives away anything and everything about its life uh, uh, straight away. It's very difficult to get that back, you know. But it feels nice and planted, it feels straight, it's not got any funny steering wheel vibrations and it's driving in a straight line and all that sort of stuff. I actually, when I got it aligned, I, I managed to get a bit more of a track focused alignment on it. I don't know if you can tell the difference between that, but it's not got, if you put this on a standard alignment machine, it'll probably tell you that it's wrong. So oh, I yeah. got it recommended off, uh, recommended off someone that races them and he'd give me like a little bit of a hybrid. It, it, it's funny, DB9s suffer from poor geometry uh, like, like you wouldn't believe to the point whereby they're almost undrivable so you go around the corner you turn the steering wheel and just, the car just wants to go straight on feels nice clutch pedal feels good too Can you tell much of a difference with that exhaust? Because the majority of the miles I've done in this is with the new exhaust. I can't really, I didn't put many miles in it when it was standard. Okay, so uh, yeah, and the difference is, is in, the, in the mid range in terms of when the noise cut, cuts in. So ordinarily, this car should be loud when you, when you pull away and then go quiet almost straight away. And then at 4,000 RPM, both exhaust um, valves will open and that's when you get the noise and it'll, it'll sing and all the rest of it. Um, because um, you've got your, your straight through cross-section pipes in the middle, if I go down a gear, yeah, you can hear it a bit louder there, but if I slow right down to 2,000 RPM, bearing my foot, three, three and a half there, so that's three, four, and it's just, it's just louder, louder, louder at that point, but it's not, it's not overly loud. That's actually something uh, that is actually quite livable with. I'm not normally a fan of exhausts that are too loud in these cars because they, they sound good anyway and they, you know, uh, they're loud enough. But that's actually something that, as a noise, you know, it's not, it doesn't drone. So you could drive it down the motorway at sort of 70 <coughs> miles an hour, and it would, it would sound, it would sound okay. It, was, it doesn't resonate inside the cabin. That's well, good to know that you approve.
<laughs> that I'm approved. Well, I, they were, I were presented with an option to remove the back box completely from this because, you know, I'm, uh, I'm a young lad, I like the sound of a nice engine. And, yeah. Uh, and when I got this cross pipe, it, it just gives me that allowance keeping the valves to have it quiet and I'm not I'm not a, an awful neighbour to have when I've still got a back box on. This, this is the point, right? I, I think I think that what you've got gives you a good balance of both. And as daft as it sounds, and we you know we we all, we all live next door to somebody, but some of the exhausts when you either remove the back box or put a shorter back box in, or just it, it, they get so loud, it just upsets everybody. It feels all right, this. Here and I think that's the first upgrade I'm going to do. Oh, but it, the, the thing is, what you've got to remember about tyres is that you can do any, you can do all these things to your car, but ultimately the contact with the road is through your tyres. So, uh, you know, it, it, the tyres have got to be for me one of the most important things to do. It's the first thing I do before I'd even look at suspension or brakes or, or whatever else it is. If you're thinking of changing it, whatever. Tires, I cannot bang on about how important tires are. Yeah, I've, uh, so I think tire technology is coming a lot since you first, first put these onto this car. Yeah. Tire technology has moved on leaps and bounds, and I think a lot of people try and stay pure with these cars. But I think a big mistake, and you know, me and Steve from Acid Nine Thirty Six were discussing this the other day, and a big mistake people make is thinking the tires that came with it are the best tires for the car. And realistically, this is old tech now. Yeah, you're right. They need replacing. There is, there is definitely on my list. Yeah, there is that. It te technology moves on, especially with tyres. It moves on all the time, doesn't it? Yeah. So that's one thing I've noticed. Is that common? I notice when the gear changes, and it's not as smooth. You almost hear the the gearbox mounts rocking a little bit. Yeah, no, it's the, it's, 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 the, it's the given the diff um, uh, normally that just makes it, it. Sometimes they can be a little bit clunky, but I have to say this is actually pretty good. Um, uh, I'd have made I'd have made more of a thing of it if it was uh, of note, but. Um. There's there's lots of little things with these cars in there that you might you might first suspect to be an issue, but in reality it's not. And I found that when I were aligning the body panels is. I was told on several occasions by several people in this field that trying to get these aligned perfectly is you are yeah, really hard. in the wind. Yeah. It's, it's possible, but sometimes you need to elongate holes, and yeah. it's not always it's not always that possible without modifying. Yeah, Certainly no, no, on the no. bonnet front, and I don't know you mentioned that on your list, but that bonnet is slid as far forward as it, as it can possibly go. And we did identify that when we were putting it back together, and the option were to remove the bonnet again and elongate the holes that, that are on the hinges just to slide the bonnet a bit more forward. I've got to be honest here, when, when, uh, when we had when these were new at the time, we've had them turn from, from the factory new, and there's just there's just there's little things like that where you look at it and think, oh, that could be a little bit better, and then you realise that actually there's, there's no adjustment and it's just how it is. So, any final verdicts on driving? I like it. I like it. I think it drives really well, actually. Good. Um, Glad you say so. I think it drives really well, uh, but uh, the effort in the yeah you know, the effort you put into this car in terms of everything you've done to the front of it and all the other bits and pieces, I would have been surprised and absolutely gutted if you hadn't put the same effort into how it feels and how it drives. So that makes sense. Oh, brilliant. Absolute pleasure. Top, top marks. And if you guys have enjoyed this video, don't forget to uh, take a look at my other videos because I'm here with John today and I'm getting a few videos out. So definitely look down in the comments and, and uh, or the links in the description to the other videos. And also there's a link to John's website. So if you're interested in purchasing any of the cars that you maybe saw in the background today when we were doing the filming, then do hit him up. Let him know that I sent you and hopefully maybe I can come back and do some more videos at another time. Other than that, guys, I'll catch you in the next video.